Hello everyone, we are on the late Palozoic chapter at segment 3 and the last slide I talked about uh, in the second segment was exactly this one and where the mega um, petroleum reservoirs formed, I mean petroleum system formed and as you can see it's all throughout the earth history but the youngest one is about 30 million years old, which means that at least that much time is needed for one to form. We're going to learn more about the oil formation in the Cenozoic chapter. The second important geologic resource is the coal. And uh, this late Paleozoic was the time when most of the world's coal, coal formed during the Pennsylvanian, remember? And this is where the Appalachian and Midwestern uh, coal have formed in the U.S. It's mostly bituminous coal. Uh, that just means that it's about 85% carbon and 15% ash. And this is uh, very important. You know that most of your uh, great-great-grandparents, grandfathers have worked possibly in the coal mine. It's very important. Virginia, Pennsylvania, even New York, uh, and of course West Virginia, and probably in Tennessee. Uh, and the other mineral resources are uh, the gypsum and hydrite, uh, which means the evaporates. It's very important in Europe, Delaware, New Mexico, Michigan. Then we have the quartz sandstone, which remember I have told you that that is very important for the glass industry. And then we have the limestone, which is very good for cement, building stones, so it has a very multiple usage. And then we have the met metallic deposits, which is mostly copper, gold, and silver. And we still have a lot of the Mississippi Valley type deposit we talked more about in the early Palozoic. And right now we are at the life of the late Palozoic. Uh, one of the most important fossil in the late Palozoic is the, is the nautiloids. Um, which is part of the mollusk, remember, uh, and the cephalopods. Uh, there is an orthoceras right there, which is a straight-shelled cephalopod, and then there is a, a curled-up one right here. So they are both cephalopods, uh, and they are quite important, actually. A lot of them uh, are index fossils during this time. The other things, uh, this here just shows you the marine communities during the late Paleozoic. And as you can see, time has changed. At the beginning, at the early Paleozoic, we have had uh, trilobite-rich uh, marine environments. It had some uh, inarticulate brachiopods and some echin echinoderms. But then in the later Paleozoic, we had a very, very uh, brachiopod a uh, rich marine environment and it has a lot of corals and crinoids and bryozoans and as the time goes on we have more mollusk you know mollusk rich environments so that's just an interesting thing about the late Paleozoic. The next very important fossil during this time is the crinoids. I already mentioned it. The crinoids are part of the echinoderm uh, phylum. And um, these are the very characteristic crinoids during this time. Interestingly, the stem of the crinoid, when the animal dies, falls apart, falls apart. And it makes like thousand low calcite um, plates. And you can see this limestone is exactly made up of those low plates. When you touch this limestone, and I have a couple of them in the lab, so you, you should look at it, and you turn it around, all these low calcite plates shining like crazy because because these tan plates are like single calcite crystals. It's really cool. Another crino crinoid group, when the, when the head part is being preserved, is the blastoid. It also belonged into the phylum echinoderm. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, 
and one other very interesting group during this time when the uh, oxygen level was really high even the microfossils grew big like this shows you the fusulines, fusulinids which are foraminifers remember those teeny tiny one cell organisms and they were becoming really really big the Devonian is called the age of the fish because there was tremendous diversity in the fish group uh, that evolved during this period. Uh, first, we had the small jawless fish, which was uh, filter feeders. They were actually the first vertebrates in the oceans. But uh, they could also move the water through their gills by some kind of mu muscular action. And this picture shows you the first fish with jaw. Uh, the name is Placoderms. It's right here, Placoderms. And uh, they were armored with heavy plates, had strong jaws, and paired pectoral and pelvic fins. So these guys could really maneuver really well, and they were actually typical predators of the ocean at this time. Right here. So don't forget that Devonian is the age of the fish. And this shows you the evolution of the plants. The plants actually appeared in the very late Silurian. And then in the Devonian, they were kind of getting out to land. And then, as you can see, the late Paleozoic was like the ferns had just completely took over and they made forests on Earth. This is the earliest vascular plant. They came out about in the Devonian, and it's interesting that they have all this low microfill. Uh, these are these teeny tiny microfill lay, uh, leaves. These plants are the uh, coal making plants. I already mentioned to you that. Uh, the coal forests were uh, fern, and the two very typical type of fern, which was really tall and making the forest, was the lapidodendron, this one right here, lapidodendron, and this here is the sigillaria. So lapidodendron and sigillaria, and this is how they looked like, this is how they looked like. Um, this is all what makes the coal, actually. Uh, another very, very important thing in, in the evolution of life during this time was the um, appearance of the amniotic egg. When we talk about the amniotic egg, that means that it has a hard shell. And so therefore, uh, the egg can survive on dry land. So animals could actually lay their eggs on dry land so the animal wasn't completely dependent on, on the water. So this was a major step in evolution. In the fish world, this was the time when actually the transition between the fish and uh, amphibians have happened. Uh, like the uh, crossopterygians had strong fins, lungs, and streamlined body. So it was absolutely capable to swim and walk some on land too. So it was kind of important. Um, in the during the late Paleozoic, uh, the reptile evolution have started basically, and um, the protorotyrids were the um, dominant reptile group by the early Permian, and this evolved into a very diverse. Um, assembly and these are the names and of course you don't have to know them it's just that it's interesting uh, and at the end I have to tell you some about the Permian mass extinction the thing is that uh, everybody knows about the Cretaceous mass extinction but if you think about it the Permian was much more uh, much bigger really uh, if you look at the this right here that's the Permian mass extinction and you can see that all of them are pretty big, but this was just the biggest. Uh, it was about 250 million years ago, and during this time, more than uh, 250, more than 90% of all species 
on earth have disappeared. Uh, it could have happened in a very short period of time, might be just a couple of thousands of years. Uh, the trilobites become completely extinct. The corals, bryozoans, and brachiopods are diminished. Land, plants and animals were also impacted. Amphibian species dwindled and fungi dominated some ecosystems. We don't really exactly know what has happened during this time. Uh, most likely, uh, the major environmental changes, remember, Pangea just have gotten together. We have major mountain, mountain chains. Uh, volcanism is very, very active. I bet the atmosphere composition have changed. The ocean circulation has changed. So there was very, very big scale changes around. So I guess there is not really too much avoid, uh, explanation needed. So I guess that's the end of the late Palozoic chapter, and I hope you didn't, didn't dislike it. So I will see you in the Mesozoics. Bye.